Hello everyone in Writing 227. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to hear from Kathleen Jackson directly. You've seen a couple of her videos on our site. Of course you saw the mock inter informational interview that her and I did together a couple of years ago and you've also seen her uh, resume workshop which hopefully is helping you through that piece of this project. So what I want to do today is give you the opportunity to hear directly from her about some of the resources that are available and some tips about different aspects of the project that you're looking at. You know, so you're looking at your, your uh, letter of introduction or your cover letter, you're looking at your personal statement, your resume, and even um, finding, finding the opportunity by doing a job search and how do you go about doing that. Now, I've identified that some of you are in different contexts than others. Some of you are at the end of college and starting to think about your careers. Others of you are kind of more toward the early middle or middle and you're thinking about internships. Either way, we want this project to be real for you, not just something that you're doing as a, as a school assignment for a grade. So having said all that, um, I'd like to just kind of let Kathy talk and if um, I feel like there's anything more I'd like to know, I'll ask her. If you feel like there's anything more that you'd like to know, you can ask her after you've watched the video. Okay. Kathy, that thank you. Great. Hi. Hi. Um, it's great being here uh, with you, Frank, and with the whole Writing 227 class. Um, I, I'm here to just kind of talk about what I'm passionate about, which is hearing people's stories. And as you heard in the video, um, I always think about your resume and your cover letter and your personal statement. To me, that's your professional story. And, um, you know, I, I read through your questions. Uh, I think I have an idea about where you're coming from. And so I'm gonna kind of do a rough outline uh, in terms of answering those. And um, anytime that you wanna get in touch with me, you can either make an appointment with me on Starfish uh, for a career appointment, or you can email me directly at kajackson at uri.edu. Um, so right now I'm not on campus, but I have Zoom meetings every day with students and I would love to meet with you to see what your questions are. So I think one of the first questions that came up that I thought was great was, um, can I, do I have to redo my resume all over again? for this class and for when you come over to the business school for business 390, the junior career passport. And the answer is, it's one of those yes and no answers. So you don't have to totally do your resume over every time. But now and the, the further on you get in school and in your professional career, when you do a resume, it should be targeted and it should be focused to what you're applying for. So I think that's why uh, Professor Romanelli is um, requiring you to find a job description and then write your documents against it because that's the practice that you're gonna be using until you retire. And I know that's like you're a freshman or a sophomore and you're like, retire, what are you talking about? But the reality is that this process is just gonna be going over and over again. Um, and I think one of the scary things, but I, I think it, it will make things come alive for you, is now when people get a resume and a cover letter, they're looking for ways to eliminate you. They don't have a lot of time to look at all the resumes and cover letters that are coming in. So the people that take the time to target their documents, those are the documents that are going to get through the scanning process that these companies have in place now. And that's why we keep teaching you this targeted thing. So can you get away with tweaking it? It depends how old your resume is. So if your resume is something that you wrote in high school and you're say a sophomore junior in college, I would say the majority of your resume needs to go away because it's representing your high school experience, not your college experience. Um, so in terms of education, your high school should be taken off. Um, in terms of jobs, your high school jobs should be taken off. In terms of your um, co-curricular activities, those should go away if they were high school. 
because an employer wants to know what's current. Uh, so, you know, I think that's a, a really important piece. Um, tweak. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, Kathy. So when I was a student, I was fortunate enough to not have to work during the school year. I had uh, enough scholarships and grants and loans, unfortunately, uh, and support to be able to focus on my academics during the school year and then to work summer jobs. So I wouldn't have had a lot of work experience to put on my resume. Uh, I was involved in a couple of activities at school, like I was at the, I worked with WRIU radio station and um, couple of clubs but so how would I transpose that into a worthwhile uh, resume um, would I focus on my academics would I show my classes and their grades would I uh, or my GPA what what would you recommend and I know you talked about this a little in the video yep. but um, this is specific I think to that point you made about kind of letting go of the high school stuff yeah, and I think, you know, um, I always like to share new things with you. And I just came back from a conference and on the conference call, there were a lot of employers. And what they were saying was that when they look at somebody's application, so the application being your resume and your cover letter, um, what they're more interested in are your skills and your strengths as opposed to your major. Yes, your major is important, but it's not going to be the the deciding factor that it was in the past. So I think what employers want you to be able to do is talk about who you are as a person, um, uh, as a professional, a pre-professional that's coming in to do an internship or a, an entry level job. Um, and they wanna know how you describe yourself. Who are they bringing into their company? Um, are you going to fit? And so you make that fit and you make that connection um, by taking a look at everything that you've got right now. So that would definitely be your education. And you know, I, I always think that your education should come at the top. Um, but then I think in every job that you have, um, you're learning skills. Those skills are really important. Um, which skills do you feel that you developed in the job? So you and I could both do the same job. I might focus on one part of the job. You might focus on another part of the job, but what were those skills and strengths and proficiencies that you developed even from babysitting, from being a lifeguard, from being a waitress, from you know being a sales clerk in a, a retail store? So all those are typical positions that you've had, I think that we've all had moving through they don't care that you served food. They care that you developed customer service skills. They care that you learned how to solve problems. Um, they care that you um, are like an entrepreneurial thinker and you can think of new ways of doing things to make their business run better. Um, so I think those are the things that you wanna put in your resume um, as opposed to you know some of the tiny details like First aid, well, I guess if you're applying to a health profession, it might be important that you had first aid, but it, it, it loses its importance based on the position that you're moving to. But what will never lose its importance are the skills that you're developing in your courses and in your part-time jobs and in a lot of your activities. Um, because if you've been involved, um, you know, a lot of times I'll talk to students and they'll say, well, uh, I'm a tour guide, I'm an RA, um, I'm another kind of, uh, I'm an orientation assistant. And so all of those positions in and of themselves are leadership positions. And so what did you do in those jobs? Because leadership would equate with management in a business world. So what leadership and management skills are you developing through those part-time activities that you're involved in. I think that's a really important thing to bring forward. Thank um, you. Yeah. That's really helpful. Also, um, I'd like to add, so our first project, um, students were working in groups by like majors. And so we had an accounting group, we had a business group, we had a management group, we had, it, it was like that. And they were looking at 
they research the types of writing that are done in their profession. And um, so they have that base to kind of know what kind of writers they're going to be and what kind of writing they're going to need to do on uh, going into this project. One of the things in writing, we always look at um, the multimodality of writing. And we think about, you know, not just the words, but the way you place the words on the page and the way you uh, color the words and the way you the way you mix in any kind of visualization or or even orality or um, anything that uh, any one of those five modes of communication that would advance your message. Um, what I worry about, though, sometimes is that resumes and um, cover letters and things like that get lost in people trying to make them pretty. And and the words still matter and they kind of get lost in all that. So can you respond to that a little bit? And again, I know, again, I know this is talked about a little bit in the video that they watched, but I think it's worth, worth talking about again. Yeah. You know, I think uh, I, I totally agree. I, I think, um, the more, um, I don't want to say vanilla, but the more basic your resume can look, um, in terms of just the print on the page and the layout and the color, the better, because you have no idea what someone's preferences are going to be um, who's reading your documents. So rather than somebody saying, oh, how could somebody put red on a resume or green on a resume or blue on a resume, if, if everything is just basic and the same and the depth of your resume it comes out in how you describe your leadership and your athletics and your education and your courses. That's where they want to see you putting your time and your emphasis. Um, I had a, I just looked at a resume for a student who was a marketing major. And I know she had done a beautiful job on her resume. Her, um, her name and all the side headings were in this really pretty blue. And then the rest of her resume was, you know, your typical black and white with your bullets. And what I like to do when I look at a resume is I like to print it off so that I can mark it up um, and, you know, kind of like draw lines and give you suggestions about things. And when I printed her resume off, I could not see her name and I could not see her side headings. So the attention that she had taken to draw attention to her name was totally lost in the printed format. So it looked great when she created it on screen. When mm -hmm. it was fine, it was great. But as soon as it came off, it it was lost. Wow, that's great advice. That's really important. Um, like so with cover letters and personal statements. Um, so it's the, of course, the most common question in any writing class is how long should it be? But, and, and my answer is always as long as you need it to be to make sure that you've created the relationship you wanna create with your reader. Um, but I'm sure that there's probably some guideline, um, range of size for, for things like that. And also content that I, I will tell them generally not to repeat their resume in their, in their cover letter, because that information is always there. Um, is that, is that right to say, or, um, should they mention some of the points in their resume or? Well, I think they mention the points in their resume, but they mention it in a different way. Mm -hmm. When What I like to think about when I look at your whole package, so this project that you're working on is phenomenal. When you work on this project, what I want, if it were me, what I would want to see would be the three or four things that you want an employer to absolutely positively remember about you. And then what those four things are, are going to get woven into your resume, into your cover letter. It's gonna be more of a, a story instead of an outline. So think of your resume as an, a targeted outline. Think of your cover letter as a targeted story and think of your personal statement similar to um, or an expansion of what you've already said in your resume and your cover letter. It's sort of like a, a big picture view of who you are. So awesome. I think I would distinguish. Awesome. Can we take a look at the, the project together? Uh, sure. What I've done here is I've put an introduction statement followed by the link to the actual assignment page, project to getting the job. Um, what I've also 
done here is where it's included the rubric that I'm using. So if we take a look at the rubric to evaluate each of the points of the project, so the employment description, the personal statement, the cover letter, and the resume. So I created that just to show them that these are the four actual um, things that need to be in the project to make sure that, that they're clear about that. And then when they go to the project, it'll bring them to this page, uh, which then gives them a number of resources, hopefully not too many, but I wanted to give them as many as possible. Um, so I included your video as well as the resume templates that you provided for us when you made that presentation last spring, which they have access to in their class folder. Um, some of these videos from the OWL about resume writing, cover letters, and personal statements. And then just a series of links, mostly OWL links, about how to go through this process. So uh, anything we can elaborate on or focus on or mention in all of this? Is this? I think the easiest document to write, if any of them were to be easy, is probably going to be your resume because it's an outline. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it always helps to get what you've done on paper. Um, and to just kind of see it in front of you. And that's sort of like a, a working document. But then I think before you go much farther, what you really need to do is you need to have a focus. So what kind of, what are you going to do with this resume? I think one of the biggest mistakes that students have made forever um, is they want one, especially one cover letter that they can just send out to everybody. And that doesn't work because it's not targeted. Um, it's not strategic. So, um, you know, it might work for a personal statement. Your personal statement may very well be, the bulk of it may be the same for every position that you're applying for. Your cover letter should definitely change for every position. And your resume should be rearranged depending on what it is that you're looking for. And I always like to use real examples. So I was working with a supply chain student who, you know, he had his education at the top of his resume. And then the second section down was called related experience. And for his related experience, he had a supply chain internship that he had done. And then he had other experience and jobs and then his, the activities they had been involved in on campus. Well, then he found out that he wanted to network with somebody who was working at Oracle in sales. And the person immediately said, sure, I'd be happy to, to talk with you about what I do. Um, that's called an informational interview. Um, but send me your resume first, so I'll see what we're going to talk about. So he was all excited. He got this connection. He sent the resume. And he didn't change the sections. So he's now talking to somebody about a sales position and his related experience says supply chain. And it was a young alum and the young alum sent it back to him and said, I don't wanna see this until you fix this. He said, because if you're talking to me about sales, that's what I wanna see first. So I think that's where, you know, there are two words that I use all the time. It needs to be strategic and it needs to be targeted. Well, the strategic is where are you going to put things on the page? What do you want them to see first? And the targeted means that you just can't talk in generalities. You have to be specific about matching what your strengths are with what they say they're looking for. So, um, you know, I, I think those are, you know, some real things to keep in mind as you think about applying to different positions. Which again, go to the fundamentals of writing that every time we write, we are focused on a particular audience with a particular purpose in mind for a particular outcome. This is a relationship. So the idea of writing something that's going to apply to everyone, God, if anyone could figure out how to do that, they would save the world. You know, um, there's no such thing as something that applies to everyone. So when you're writing, you really do have to focus very much on who you're writing it for, why you're writing it, what you're trying to make happen with this person. So, a resume would, would, would not be an exception to that.
it would have to be designed for that person for that purpose and for that outcome so that's where Kathy so what Kathy's saying applies to all writing um, but specific here to business all right is there anything else you'd like to add um well I, I know that there's a question about um well, I might only be a freshman or a sophomore and I'm not applying for a full-time job yet. Well, I think this whole process, it's a great process to practice for whatever you're applying for. If you're applying for a club leadership position, think of how much better your application or your, your process is gonna be if you hand in like this really nice looking resume, probably not a cover letter, but a resume with whatever else they're asking of you. So I think it's a good practice to get into. Um, you can use this practice if you're applying for a work study job on campus. Um, you can use it for any summer job. You can use it for any leadership position. And then the next step would be when you qualify for an internship and then ultimately for a full-time job. So I think it's a progression in terms of the kinds of jobs that you're moving through. Um, but I always like to say, because I work in the College of Business, everything's a business. And so regardless of what it is that you're doing, whether it's, you know, selling Dell's lemonade at Narragansett Beach, or, you know, whether you're working um, in a, a social media capacity, all of those things are jobs. If you do, um, for campus entertainment, if you do events, that's a job. Those are great skills that you're developing. So make sure that you capitalize on them. And whether it be pre-internship and you're just looking for, you know, I know that I want to work in a bank. And so this summer you're going to apply as a teller in a bank versus you want to be the vice president in a bank somewhere down the road. It's all a continuum in terms of how you build off of the jobs that you've had. So the way the question was asked by one student was, should I fake it? And your answer along with mine is no. Apply it to something that's real to you now at this time in your life. Right. Like a lot of people will say to me, um, well, for your assignment, I would say find something that relates to now. Um, for really, what are you going to do summer 2021? I would say find something where when you look at the job description, 60% of it you have because you'll see that there's a lot of duties and requirements that are listed. If you've got most of them, fine. If you've got a good number of them, fine. If you've only got a couple, I wouldn't bother because, because and I know you don't wanna hear this, but there are systems within the companies that do scanning. They're called applicant tracking systems and they um, scan out 75% of the resumes that are submitted. And I just think that figure is staggering. Yeah. It's a video that I require in my class because I, th I think it just talks to you about the way things are really being done business-wise. So it's not that you shouldn't apply for things, you definitely should, but make sure it's something that you feel comfortable talking about. And make sure that whatever you write on your resume or in your cover letter, it's something that you can defend. So if it's something that your mom or your dad or, or me or Mr. Romanelli tell you, to, well, this would be a great thing to put on your resume. Um, if you can't defend it and if you can't talk about it, don't put it there because that's the first thing that they're going to ask you. And you want to come through the process well. As always, I appreciate all your insights and your help. Did we mention the the resources at the college and, and I was just getting into them. So um, okay. help with a resume, cover letter, the job search, grad school, those are all things that you would make an appointment with me for. If you need specific help finding an internship, it would be Lynn Finnegan. She's the internship coordinator in the business school and you can find her on Starfish and you would make an appointment with her. Um, we we know that this has just been a crazy year. We know it's been a crazy year for you. It's been a crazy year for us. It's been a crazy year for the world. Um, what we tried to do is we tried to come up with some really great offerings for J-Term um, that I wanna share with you in case you'd like to take advantage of them. So there are 
two classes that are being offered um, through the College of Business. Um, one is Business 491. It's career planning and career strategy. I would say I have not seen that because it's a 400 level, you have to be a senior. Um, I think it's just, it's a J-term numbering system. But basically what we're going to help you do is we're going to help you identify some of the things that you've done in this class already, your strengths and your skills. But then we're going to expose you to different companies that are out there, um, probably virtual tours, virtual discussions with some of the people that work there. So you can see what different companies are like. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be a lot of reflective assignments that go along with that. There's also a, a 492 class, which is the art of networking and building relationships. I would say that's probably a little bit of a higher level job or course than the other one. So, you know, I might want to take a career planning and career strategy if I was like a sophomore, first semester junior, and more second semester junior, senior for the networking and building relationships. Uh, there is also a road trip to the real world um, program that's being offered. And um, this is offered by my professional association. The thing that I like about the road trips to the real world is it's not focusing on jobs only in Rhode Island. As a matter of fact, there are very few companies that are in New England. More of them are in the New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area. So for those of you who are living in that geographic area, this would be a, a great virtual thing for you to sign up for. Where can you find out about it? Um, every two weeks, the College of Business sends out a newsletter. Um, it has key information about mostly career and internship opportunities that we want you to know about. Um, there are links in there. Um, the links are to Handshake. So obviously, College of Business newsletter, handshake for the bigger picture. Um, and, uh, you know, I think those are some really, really good resources for oh, you to keep in touch with. In the spring, there will be another career day. Um, this is a College of Business event. Um, usually in the morning, in the spring, it's something about the job search process, but it's not me talking again. It's not Lynn talking again. We bring employers in and they give you pointers based on what they've seen in the work that they're doing. And then in the afternoon, there's typically a job fair. Um, we did it this fall. Um, we had mm, 18, I think, um, Zoom sessions with breakout rooms going in the morning. And then in the afternoon, the whole job fair was done virtually. But um, it was a great experience for both our alums who represent a lot of the employers and, um, and our students as well. Excellent. Thank you. And I guess it's a good time for me to mention that in the spring, I teach Writing 388, which is a um, grant and proposal writing class for clients. And I co-teach it with a professional from business. Um, she is a uh, professional proposal writer from uh, Company I in Providence. And um, this year we'll be adding someone who will be consulting with us for nonprofit um, proposal writing as well. And then the second half of the course, we do grant writing, and we do and we do real grant writing opportunities that come up that will benefit our URI community. So it's a, another great class to think about, especially for you supply chain folks and maybe some others that can imagine you'll be looking to write for proposals and grant opportunities. So, yeah, that's an excellent course. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much for your time, Kathy. Thanks for doing this for okay. us. And hopefully all of you um, will find something in this presentation that, that will benefit you, not only for the success of this project, but obviously for the bigger picture um, for your success. So thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. It's great being with you. Thank you, you too. All right.